The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 17 in your distance education program in chemistry for lower seat science. I am Longning Kingu Innocent, your chemistry teacher. We are still on the topic, matter, properties, and transformation. We are treating the subtopic, the Mo concept. This subtopic, the Mo concept, will be treated in the following lessons. Relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass and molar mass, the mole and Avogadro constant, empirical and molecular formulae part one, empirical and molecular formulae part two, more quantity of gases, determination of molar mass of volatile liquid, more quantities of solutions, part one, more quantities of solutions, part two, modes and chemical equations, acid-based titrations, part one, acid-based titrations, part two, oxidation numbers and naming of inorganic compounds, Balancing redox equations, redox titrations, precipitation and complexometric titrations, limiting reagents, and yield of reactions. Before beginning today's lesson, I would like us to correct the assignment we had at the end of lesson 16. Correction of assignment. 25 cubic centimeters of a 0.005 moles per cubic decimeter of a solution of hydrated sodium thiosulfate was mixed with 25 cubic centimeters of 0.05 moles per cubic decimeter iodine solution and allowed to react. A. Calculate the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate used. Now, the volume of the sodium thiosulfate solution given in the question is 25 cubic centimeters, and the molarity of the sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate solution is 0.005 moles per cubic decimeters. We know that number of moles of a species is given by multiplying the molarity of the species by its volume in cubic decimeters. So if we substitute the molarity and volume with their values, that is with the volume of the sodium thiosulfate solution and the molarity of the sodium thiosulfate solution, we have number of moles of sodium thiosulfate being equal to 0.005 moles per cubic decimeters times 25 divided by 1000. Notice that we are dividing by 1000 to convert the volume from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters. So if we simplify, we have number of moles of sodium thiosulfate being equal to 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles. So 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate was used or was present in the reaction. B. Determine the limiting reagent. Given, given the balanced equation where two moles of the thiosulfate reacts with one mole of iodine to give 
one mole of tetrathionate and two moles of iodine. Now we shall use a series of steps to determine the limiting reagent in the reaction. We shall begin with step one. And in step one, we calculate the number of moles actually present. That is the number of moles of the species, the iodine and the sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate that are present in the reaction medium. So the volume of the iodine solution in the question is 25 cubic centimeters. The molarity of the iodine solution is 0 0.05 moles per cubic decimeters. Again, we know that calculating number of moles, we can get number of moles by multiplying molarity by volume, and the volume should be in cubic decimeters. So if we substitute the molarity of iodine in the equation and the volume of iodine in the equation, we will have number of moles of iodine is equal to 0 0.05 moles per cubic decimeters times 25 divided by 1,000. Now, the 1,000 again is to convert the volume from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters. So simplifying, we have number of moles of iodine is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles of iodine. Now, it means that initially, we had 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles of IUT and 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles of the thiosulfate. So these are the number of moles of the species that were present in the reaction mixture at the beginning of the reaction. Now, go to step, we are going to, we are treating step two now. And in step two, we calculate the number of moles required, the number of moles of the species required in the reaction. Now, the equation of the reaction is one in which two moles of the thiosulfate reacts with one mole of iodine to give one mole of the tetrathionate and two moles of iodine. Now, the mole ratio is one in which two moles of iodine reacts with one mole. So it is two moles to one mole. So if two moles of the thiosulfate reacts with one mole of iodine, therefore 1.25 times 10 to the power negative four moles of the thiol sulfate react with an unknown x moles of IUD. If we proceed by simple proportion, x will be 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles times 1 mole divided by 2 moles. That is, we proceed by cross multiplication. If we simplify, we have x is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the power negative 5 moles of IUD. Therefore, 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles of the thiosulfate is required to completely react with 6.25 times 10 to the power negative 5 moles of IUD. Step 3. If the number of moles of the reactant present is greater than that required, then the other reactant is a limiting reagent. I repeat, if a number of moles of the reactant present is greater than that required, then the other reactant is the limiting reagent. Now, number of moles of the thiosulfate present is 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles. Number of moles of thiosulfate required is 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 4 moles. Now, number of moles of iodine present is 1.25 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles. Number of moles of iodine required is 6.25 times 10 to the power negative 5 moles. Now, since number of moles of iodine present is greater than number of moles of iodine required, then the sodium thiosulfate is the limiting reagent, which means that Iodine was present in excess. And if iodine is present in excess, iodine is the excess reagent, and sodium thiosulfate becomes the limiting reagent. <laughs> Today's lesson is titled Yield of Reactions. The outline of the lesson is as follows Objectives prerequisite, yield of reactions, evaluation, assignment, and references. 
objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between actual yield and theoretical yield of reactions. You should be able to calculate percentage yield of reactions. You should be able to state reasons why the actual yield is usually less than the theoretical yield. Hence, percentage is generally less than 100%. Prerequisite. In order to effectively understand this lesson, you must be able to write and balance chemical equations. You must be able to calculate moles, masses, and volumes of reacting substances and even of product from balanced chemical equations. You must be able to determine or identify limiting reagents when reacting quantities are known. Yield of reactions. By definition, the yield of a reaction is the amount of product obtained from the chemical reaction. I repeat, the yield of reaction is the amount of product obtained from the chemical reaction. Talking of amount of product, we mean the mass of the product, number of moles of the product, or the volume of the product if the product is a gas. There are two types of yield. These are the actual yield and the theoretical yield. Actual yield. Actual yield is the amount of product obtained by experiment. I repeat, the actual yield of a reaction is the amount of product in that reaction obtained by experiment. Now, the actual yield is always gotten by isolating the product and weighing or measuring volume in case of gases at standard temperature and pressure or room temperature and pressure. Now, we know the, the, some of the techniques used in isolating or separating uh, compounds. For example, we can go by evaporation to dryness, simple distillation, chromatography, steam distillation, and many others. So after the reaction, the product obtained is separated or isolated. Then if the product is a solid, the mass is weighed. If it is a gas, the volume is measured. Now this volume of the product obtained from experiment is what is known as the actual yield. Amount of product obtained by experiment. Now if there is an amount of product obtained by experiment, then there should be another type of yield, which is a theoretical yield. Theoretical yield. The theoretical yield of a reaction by definition is the maximum amount of product that can be obtained by a reaction from a given amount of reactant. I repeat, the theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be obtained by a reaction from a given amount of reactant. In other words, theoretical yield is the amount of product predicted by a balanced equation. Now, theoretical yield is always calculated from the limiting reagent. Remember, the limiting reagent is a reagent that is completely used up in the course of a reaction. And we were told in the previous lessons that the limiting reagent determines the amount of product formed in the course of a reaction. That is why the theoretical yield is always calculated from the limiting reagent. Percentage yield of reactions. The percentage yield of a reaction is the actual yield of that reaction expressed as a percentage of the theoretical yield of the reaction. I repeat, the percentage yield of a reaction is the actual yield of that reaction expressed as a percentage of the theoretical yield of the reaction. The percentage yield is calculated using the formula percentage yield is equal to actual yield divided by theoretical yield and multiplied by 100. It's important to note that the actual yield of a reaction is always less than the theoretical yield. Or, the percentage yield of a reaction is always less than 100%. This is because of the following reasons. 
the reaction may not totally go to completion. Now, think of reactions in equilibrium. They never go to completion. So if a reaction is a reaction in equilibrium, it will never go to completion. And so the actual yield will always be less than the theoretical yield. Some volatile product may escape in the course of the reaction. Material may be lost during isolation or purification. So during isolation or purification, there may be mistakes that may occur and some material may get lost. Because of this, the actual yield will be less than the theoretical yield. Now, some side reactions may also produce undesirable products. So in the course of a reaction, if some side reactions occur leading to undesirable product, the product expected, the actual yield of the product expected will always be less than the theoretical yield. Errors may also be made during the process of weighing of the reactant and product. And the reactant may contain impurities that are considered that are not considered, that are considered in the mass, but not involved in the reaction. I repeat, the reactants may contain impurities that are considered in the mass, but not involved in the reaction. When this happens, the actual yield will be less than the theoretical yield of the reaction. Example one, 12.4 grams of copper two carbonate was heated in the crucible and only 7.2 grams of copper two oxide was obtained. What is the percentage yield of copper two oxide? Given that the relative atomic mass of copper is 64, the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, and the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16, 16. Solution, the actual yield of the reaction or the actual yield of the reaction, that is the mass of copper sulfate obtained from experiment is 7.2 grams, given in the question. Now the question of the reaction is one in which one mole of copper carbonate decomposes to give one mole of copper oxide and one mole of carbon dioxide gas. Now the mole ratio is one in which one mole of copper carbonate gives one mole of copper oxide. So we have a one to one mole reaction. The mass ratio is one in which 124 grams of the copper carbonate will react to produce or will decompose to produce 80 grams of copper oxide. So if 124 grams of copper carbonate produces 80 grams of copper oxide, then 12.4 grams of the copper carbonate will produce an unknown amount of copper oxide X. The unknown amount of copper oxide X can be gotten from simple proportion, where X is equal to 80 grams times 1 times 12.4 grams divided by 124. So simplifying, we have X is equal to 8.0 grams of copper oxide. The theoretical yield is 8.0 grams, that is, the amount obtained from the stoichiometrically balanced equation. The actual yield given is 7.2 grams. We know that percentage yield is actual yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100. So if we substitute actual yield and theoretical yield, we shall have actual, a percentage yield is equal to 7.2 grams divided by 8.0 by grams times 100. So simplifying, we have Percentage yield is equal to 90%. The percentage yield of copper oxide is 90%. The 90% is less than 100. Recall, it is important to remember that the actual yield of a reaction is the amount of product obtained by experiment. The theoretical yield of a reaction is the maximum amount of the product that can be obtained by a reaction from a given amount of reactant. The actual yield is always less than the theoretical yield. The percentage yield of a reaction is the actual yield expressed as a percentage of the theoretical yield of the reaction. Evaluation. To know how well you followed this lesson, 
I'd like you to answer this question. If 15 grams of copper 2 chloride reacts with 20 grams of sodium nitrate to form sodium chloride, as shown by the equation, where one mole of copper 2 chloride reacts with two moles of sodium nitrate to give two moles of sodium chloride and one mole of copper nitrate. A. Identify the limiting reagent. B. How much of the excess reagent is left? And C. Calculate the mass of sodium chloride expected. D. If 11.3 grams of sodium chloride was obtained, then what is the percentage yield of the reaction? Given that the relative atomic mass of copper is 64, that of chlorine is 35.5, that of sodium is 23, that of oxygen is 16, that of hydrogen is 1. Solution. A. Identify the limiting reagent. Identify the limiting reagent. Now we shall proceed using a series of steps to identify the limiting reagent. The mass of the copper chloride given in the question is 15 grams. The mass of sodium nitrate is 20 grams. Now step one, we want to calculate the number of moles of the species actually used or present in the course of the reaction. Now, we know that number of moles of a species is given by dividing the given mass of that species by its molar mass. The molar mass of copper 2 chloride is 64 plus 2 into 35.5. The ram of copper is 64, that of chlorine is 35.5. We simplify, we have the molar mass of copper 2 chloride is 135 grams per mole. Now, so the number of moles of copper chloride will be 15 divided by 135. And if we simplify, we have number of moles of copper 2 chloride is 0 0.111 moles of copper 2 chloride. The molar mass of sodium nitrate is given by 23 plus 14 plus 3 into 16. 23 is a ram of sodium, 14 is that of nitrogen, and 16 that of oxygen. So we simplify, we have molar mass of sodium nitrate is 85 grams per mole. Therefore, the number of moles of sodium nitrate will be 20 divided by 85. If we simplify, we have number of moles of sodium nitrate is 0 0.235 moles. So there were 0 0.235 moles of sodium nitrate present and 0 0.111 mole of copper 2 chloride. Step two, calculate the number of moles required. Number of moles of the species required for the reaction. Now, the equation of the reaction is one in which one mole of copper 2 chloride reacts with two moles of sodium nitrate to give two moles of sodium chloride and one mole of copper nitrate. The mole ratio, that is copper, that of mole ratio of copper 2 chloride and sodium nitrate is one to two. If one mole of copper chloride reacts with two moles of sodium nitrate, Therefore, 0 0.111 mole of copper chloride will react with an unknown number of moles of sodium nitrate, X. The number of moles X can be gotten from simple proportion, where X is equal to 0 0.111 mole times 2 mole divided by 1 mole. We simplify X to be 0 0.222 moles. So 0 0.222 moles of sodium nitrate was required in the reaction and 0 0.111 mole of copper 2 chloride was also required. Now, since the number of moles of sodium nitrate present, that is 0 0.235 moles, is greater than that required, then sodium nitrate is in excess and the limiting reagent is copper 2 chloride. The limiting reagent in the reaction is copper 2 chloride. Number two, how much of the excess reagent was left or is left? How much of the excess reagent is left at the end of the reaction? Now, the excess reagent is sodium nitrate. The number of moles of sodium nitrate in excess 
is gotten by subtracting number of moles of sodium required, of sodium nitrate required, from number of moles of sodium nitrate present. So we sub substitute uh, the number of moles of sodium nitrate present and that required with their values we have. Number of moles of sodium nitrate in excess will be 0 0.235 mole minus 0 0.222 moles. We simplify, we have 0 0.013 moles. So 0 0.013 moles of sodium nitrate was in excess. So 0 0.013 moles of sodium nitrate was left after the reaction. Number three, calculate the mass of sodium chloride expected. Calculate the mass of sodium chloride expected. Now the reaction given, the equation of the reaction is given where one mole of copper to chloride reacts with two moles of sodium nitrate. The mole ratio or, and to produce two moles of sodium chloride and one mole of copper nitrate. The mole ratio, now we are we, 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 we are, since the limiting reagent is copper chloride and the amount of product or the yield is determined from the limiting reagent, we are going to relate the copper chloride to the sodium chloride that we are working with in this question. So the mole ratio, copper chloride to sodium chloride is 1 to 2 and the mass ratio, we get 1 times 135 grams, which is the molar mass of copper chloride and 2 times 58.5 grams, 58.5 58.5 is the molar mass of sodium chloride. So if 135 grams of copper to chloride produce 117 grams of sodium chloride, then 15 grams of copper chloride will produce an unknown mass of sodium chloride. Remember, 15 grams of the 15 grams was the mass of copper to chloride given in the question. So X is gotten from simple proportion where x is equal to 15 times 117 divided by 135. We simplify, x will be 13.0 grams of sodium chloride. So the mass of sodium chloride expected is 13.0 grams. And this mass is the same as the theoretical yield of the reaction, as the amount of sodium chloride obtained from the balance equation, which is a theoretical yield. Now D, if 11.3 grams of sodium chloride was obtained, then what is the percentage yield of the reaction? Now, the mass of sodium chloride obtained from experiment is the same as the actual yield. So we know the actual yield and the theoretical yield, we shall then proceed to calculate percentage yield. The actual yield is 11.3 grams. Theoretical yield is 13.0 grams. Remember that percentage yield is always the actual yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100. So we substitute actual yield and theoretical uh, yield with their values. We have percentage yield is equal to 11.3 grams divided by 13.0 grams times 100. And this gives us 86.9%. The percentage yield of sodium nitrate is 86.9%. Assignment. Before our next lesson, answer this question. 25.0 grams of ethanol were oxidized to produce 29.5 grams of ethanoic acid. Calculate the yield of the reaction. Calculate the percentage yield of the reaction. References. Chemistry for IB Diploma by Steve Owen. Advanced Chemistry by Michael Cluxton and Rosalind Fleming. Chemistry in Context by Graham Hill and John Holman. Complete Advanced Level Chemistry by Ngule Emmanuel Eno and the Internet. We have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on Atomic Structure. <laughs> Manetambia ni nyane